Hi, I'm Dr. Mila Brujic, and today we're joined with Dr. Joe Pizzamenti on the OI show, where we're going to be talking about everything Mediterranean diet. Welcome, everybody, and Dr. Pizzamenti, welcome, and thank you for being on the show. So uh, give the audience a little bit of a background on yourself and, and really um, what you do in optometry, Joe. Uh, wonderful to be here, Millie. Thanks again for inviting me. Um, what, what do I do in optometry? I am um, a clinician and I'm an educator. And that's what I've been doing for the past 30 years. Uh, I've been part of uh, a couple of different faculties at a couple of different optometry schools. Currently, University of the Incarnate Word, Rosenberg School of Optometry. Um, and prior to that, Nova Southeastern University. And so my area of expertise, I guess, or interest uh, would be mostly posterior segment disease. Yeah. And that's where I've uh, really focused uh, in clinical care and also in didactic education as well. You have yeah, a great got, segment, I, Joe. Well, you yeah. have a great segment that you do monthly on the macula and macular changes. You do a great job on that. You were actually just part of a meeting in Europe. Tell us a little bit about that and some of the similarities and differences that exist between optometry here in the U.S. and optometry in Europe? Well, it was great. It was the, the European Academy of Optometry and Optics. And thanks for, for uh, mentioning my monthly e-newsletter called AMD Clinical That's Insights. Great. In fact, this month, I do a little synopsis of that meeting if you want to uh, read a little bit deeper about it. But first, I'll talk about the similarities. Um, optometrists in Europe, particularly Central Europe, are um, of diverse ages. So we, from the very young to the, the grizzled veterans like myself and, and even older, um, and they are excited about the profession. They are enthusiastic about the profession. Um, the young ones really want to do everything. So, you know, they pride themselves, Mille, on being great uh, refractive care providers. You know, the they all seem to be real wizards with respect to contact lenses. Ask them anything about spectacle lenses, special treatments, and refraction, and they'll have an answer ready. Um, but they really want to kind of move uh, the profession forward in terms of more disease training without giving up that refractive base. And so the, the, those are the, the main um, similarities. The difference is and it differs from country to country. You know, the laws are slightly different in Czech Republic than they are in Poland versus Italy versus Great Britain, uh, which is closer to us in terms of scope of practice, Great Britain. Uh, but I did a workshop on binocular indirect ophthalmoscopy where about a dozen Great. young optometrists participated and uh, most of them had never touched a BIO, so it was pretty gratifying. The goal was yeah. for everybody to get a view of the fundus, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they were excited about it. Mm -hmm. It was great. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we did some education, uh, didactic education as well. So it's evolving. And I'll tell you, Joe, I just had the opportunity to be uh, in a conference in Croatia. And one of the lectures I gave there was the anterior segment disease in the systemic link. And there is this real want and need yeah. to become more full scope everywhere, e even in the US. And Joe, I, ha I have to give you kudos. You gave one of the best lectures at Academy on the Mediterranean diet and its influence on the eye. And I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive in that. First, I guess, what, what kind of made you interested in the Mediterranean diet and its potential influence on the eye? Well, there's really, there's really a lot of data on the beneficial effects of the Mediterranean diet. And it's really one of the top two or three diets that are out there in terms of overall systemic wellness. But one of the things that I learned uh, in researching that talk is that it's more than a diet. It's really more of a lifestyle yeah. um, than yeah, anything I, else. It's, I, I love yeah. that you said that, Joe, because whenever yeah. you say diet, you kind of coax that to like, I'm trying to do something to lose weight. And this is, this is a lifestyle. And D dive deeper into that, Joe. Like, what is identified us with the Mediterranean? Let's let's rephrase it on yeah, this it, podcast: the Mediterranean lifestyle. Well, well, of course, the Mediterranean diet is a big part of that lifestyle, right? Uh, but the Mediterranean lifestyle 
is predicated on movement, really, and getting back to um, what the Europeans did a hundred years ago, and in many many countries uh, in the Mediterranean, along the Mediterranean, uh, they're still doing that today. You know, these were shepherds, and that you know they're they're walking up and down hills all day. Um, a, wa a daily walk is part of their activity. Um, public transportation is less used um, than than biking or walking to work, and so there's that element of built-in physical activity, not necessarily going to the gym like you or I would, but just building it into your day. And, and then there's the, the whole um, wellness component. We really cannot discount the, com the role of the community. You know, the relationships, there's a small group. There tends to be a small group of five people that sort of grow up together and they know everything about one another and a really close knit group of confidants. And then there's a medium sized group that everyone seems to be connected to in the Mediterranean, be it faith based or um, just a, a local club or whatever the activity. And then there are larger groups that get together. Um, you'll see Europeans and Mediterraneans going on vacation three generations at a time. So there's a built in support network of people that's important. We haven't even talked about the food yet. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more, Joe. What what is yeah. what is entailed in that Mediterranean food mm -hmm. component? Yeah, as as you would imagine, uh, being close to the water, um, there are these blue zones where people tend to live past a hundred. Not only do they live long, Mila, but they live in a very healthy manner. Uh, probably one of the top pandemics, I, I would call it by now, is unhealthy aging, right? Living longer doesn't necessarily mean living healthier or living better. And I would say that along with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and um, age-related diseases, as well as viruses, that unhealthy aging is one of the great pandemics of, of the 21st century. Um, and so if we can eat in such a way uh, that everything is fresh and it, it stresses whole foods, whole grains. Uh, the diet stresses more seafood, uh, less red meat, not necessarily becoming a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, but just the, the basis of the diet, it's a plant-based diet. Most of the essential nutrients really come from plants. Another and interesting- yeah, and go ahead. Plant, plants and fish, right, Joe? Those are it's, the those are the two biggest components. It really is. They really are plants, fish, other lean protein, um, be it poultry uh, or even plant based protein is fine as well. Uh, but so that coupled with the lifestyle uh, really helps people to live better. So, Joe, what are some of the like? Let, let's talk a little bit about maybe one or two big long term. Yeah systemic conditions that are potentially helped with the Mediterranean lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then let's dive into some eye stuff. So let's, what are some systemic conditions where you see mm -hmm. and the research has vetted out that this lifestyle does improve outcomes for certain patients? Well, we, we could talk about type two diabetes and the obesity epidemic, you know, all day long, but I'd like to focus on a couple of, of less obvious ones. Um, autoimmune disease is on mm -hmm. the rise. Not mm -hmm. quite sure why, um, but some of the research is beginning to show that a kind of a personalized diet um, helps alleviate some of the symptoms that come with autoimmune conditions. Not necessarily a specific diet, but more of a personalized diet. What works for me may not work for you. Um, I may need to become a vegetarian to live better with my autoimmune disease, whereas another patient um, may just need to give up butter to, to live better uh, or um, can still have meat, that kind of thing. But I really think we're going to see a lot more with respect to a Mediterranean style diet and autoimmune diseases in the next decade. Um, Joe, I've had, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say what particularly too, with respect to 
the eye because I know Mac degeneration is really oh, yeah. influenced by this as well. Oh, no question. Um, you know, unhealthy aging means AMD. You could lump AMD with Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative conditions, um, you know, that affect uh, people that are older. And so, you know, the, the research is starting to show that a Mediterranean diet is protective. And in fact, we've known this um, for a long time based on the research of Johanna Seddon at Mass Eye and Ear, as well as others that did these landmark studies 15 years ago, showing that a plant-based or Mediterranean type diet was protective against AMD, even in patients who have you know, the complement factor H and other genetic mm. variants that where maybe they were dealt a bad deck of cards genetically, but their lifestyle can help them overcome and even avoid in some cases, AMD. And so, um, yeah, there's, there's plenty out there. And Joe, that's as an independent factor, correct? Oh, Very absolutely. Similar to the way that wearing UV protection can do that as well, or lower risk. Yep. No, no question. So yep. Joe, I'm going to ask you a really, really tough question here. And I don't know if you've come across this, okay. uh, across your, your, your scope of, of researching all of this. Cause one of the toughest things with something like this, knowing all the benefits is how do you now incorporate something like this, this type of lifestyle into your lifestyle? How does that happen? And how do you create a habit of it and continue with that habit? Yeah, you, you know, it's, have you read anything that kind of yeah. gives successful tips on this? Um, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a, it's a fantastic point that you bring up because, Hey, we're patients too. And we would like, we as optometrists would like to model healthy living for our patients, as well as do ourselves and our eyes and our bodies a big favor. And so, um, and so I have tried, I'm trying <laughs> to adopt uh, a more Mediterranean style, uh, lifestyle where I am walking more and that's, that's been my activity. You know, I can't run, I have a bad knee, but I can walk and walking and going to the gym, you know, that that's really helped me. It also helps with stress. I mean, stress is, is another epidemic. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the sorbitol, uh, builds up in stress and, um, you know, bad things happen all over the body. And so, staying active, keep continuing to move. And when I go shopping, I'm not necessarily following a checklist, but I am being much more mindful in what I am buying. I am buying and eating uh, much more fish and quite a few more vegetables. And when I do eat carbs, it's usually whole grains. And so yeah. that's, that's where I'm so going with it. And hopefully, um, the, the results will, will show that I'll, uh, live more healthy. So Joe, I have one more question for you. Now, for those of our, in our audience that may enjoy a drink or two, um, does, does the, does, does the Mediterranean diet lend itself to that in the lifestyle or is it a alcohol is a no-go? Well, you know, the Mediterranean diet includes one or two glasses of red wine per day. And if you look at the people of Sardinia, right, um, they tend to drink at least maybe two glasses of a wine by the name of Cananao. It's the equivalent of Garnacha from Spain. Uh, same grape, different place. But this grape has the highest level of resveratrol of, of all the red wines. So Cananao from Sardinia, but really any red wine, Pinot Noir, whatever you like, is going to be um, the healthiest beverage. Uh, you know, so I drink three things, Mila. I drink a couple of cups of coffee, almost black. I can't have it completely black, no sugar, um, water, and red wine. And that's what I do. Now, I've never, you know, told a patient that doesn't drive, never started them on alcohol. You don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, some of the research actually showed that people that, that drink two glasses of red wine per day tend to live longer than those that don't drink at all. So, you know, that's, you know, one study, but 
that's that's well, a can, study that I like. <laughs> I can tell you, Joe, even if those two patient types, that one that drank two glasses and one that didn't, yeah, yeah. even if they live for the same length, I think yeah. the person that drank the two glasses yeah. of wine, their life might be a little bit happier. Maybe a little bit one. more fun. And not not to mention the social aspect of drinking. You know, yeah, of course. In the Mediterranean, you know, the, the wine is usually with a meal uh, or with, with people as part of a social atmosphere. So yeah. you get sort of a double benefit meal. Well, Joe, you just made every listener's like day because it's all about taking one mm -hmm. step closer to incorporating Mediterranean uh, lifestyle into your into your own lifestyle. And that can mean not necessarily mm -hmm. taking that red wine out of the picture and incorporating Keep it in. other things, including Absolutely. movement. Just listen, thank thank you so much. It's always a pleasure uh, picking your brain on these type of topics, especially around nutrition. It's great seeing you and hope to do this again sometime. Thanks, Joe. Take care and everybody else. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.